Whether you are watching live or archived, we need your help to keep fun going. You can subscribe to First Updates now on Twitch, give bits, or make a donation. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description on how you can help fun. So speaking of uh, First Headquarters in Manchester, uh, mm -hmm. so big announcement this past week, kickoff kits are going virtual. So flying under the radar, a huge change to how kickoffs will take place is coming for the 2019 season. Say goodbye to physically constructed fields, which for me means I get a few more days of like relaxing before kickoff. <laughs> I'm sure other people are excited about that too. And the field builder program and say hello to virtual fields. So Frank announced in a recent blog post that virtual fields will be made available immediately after the kickoff broadcast. And they are, quote, inviting sponsors to provide a greater range of resources from simple Google Cardboard-like experiences that can be used on common smartphones to full-on virtual experiences that use high-end headsets. Should be interesting to see how that goes. Frank goes on to explain that there have been issues with game leaks, <laughs> surprise, surprise, in the day of technology, which is attributing to the field builder program being abolished. He mentions that 45% of the kickoffs did not have field builders. So let's send this around the table for some discussions on this. And if you are watching live, tag at First Updates Now because we want to hear your opinions on this. So, yeah. Lena, let's start off with you and give us your opinion on, on this and how it may impact teams, if at all, in Mexico and beyond. Yeah. So I'm really excited for this because um, there has been times which actually in Mexico we've tried to, like, volunteers tried to done the field kickoffs, but never. So mm -hmm. this is actually, like, the first time teams may get a closer glimpse to the to the field uh, in Mexico. So I'm actually like excited maybe if in kickoff we get like a view in virtual reality, maybe some teams will bring their Google Cardboards or something so everyone can just see them on VR. Cool. So yeah, I think it's gonna be an advantage for Mexico to actually get to see it like this. So interesting thing you just mentioned there that like at kickoff everybody's gonna get to see it. The one issue I see with that is the reason why they release the manual early and then provide an encryption key is for that same reason, is that everybody tries to download at the same time the server crashes, right? Yeah. Or there's not enough bandwidth or that sort of thing. So I th think that could be potentially an issue at kickoff that uh, there's going to be a couple people who get the VR field and not everybody because it's going to be a you know half a terabyte or not half, half a gigabyte download uh, to uh, download it. Everybody's trying to do it at the same time. And it's going to crash the server or there's just not enough bandwidth to go around or it, it's going to be a long time. So uh, it, it was nice to be able to see a field like or at least some resemblance of it to get that tactile feeling. And I think I actually think the people that affects the most is not a lot of people who are watching the stream necessarily, but it's a lot of teams who are not informed and who are not really going to know or who uh, might show up the kickoff. And that's the only thing that they see until their first competition sort of thing, because they don't build a practice field or really build practice elements. So that's where I see a potential issue with it. However, on the other end, uh, Christine, I, I would hundred percent share your enthusiasm if I was in your shoes, because I know that it takes a really long time and the measurements that they give suck and the drawings yeah. that they give suck. And it, it has just been a, an absolute uh, circus the last few years trying mm -hmm. to be able to do something, not telling you everything at the same time. So I get versus so, I get there. I get their idea. I just want to hop in real quick. Yeah. Sorry, PJ, for probably cutting you off. I know you were probably going to be next. But to that point that Tyler just made of like for the teams that aren't watching the stream or aren't on Chief Delphi or don't have, you know, access to people that are helpful. I mean, as crappy as a lot of the field elements have been for kickoff sites in the last few years, especially like if you think back to like, you know, 2015, they wanted us to make those like little angled ramps out of uh, plywood sheets, which mm -hmm. is basically the biggest safety hazard ever trying to like shear off like that angle, nearly chopped some fingers off. Um, but and then like the 2016 game elements did not react at all out of plywood the same way that they did on the field, which is yeah. like good and bad. But at the same time, you have so many rookies that are showing up to these remote kickoffs and that's their first experience in FRC. Like imagine just starting off fresh as a student or as a, you know, a mentor, a teacher, coach, whatever, and you have no idea what's going on. So for me, like I, I was actually talking to Jamie Luce about this this past weekend um, with you know, the experience that a rookie gets at these, you know, they may not be the most accurate things, but they get an idea of like the size and the scale and the more, more experienced people that are there at the kickoff and kind of talk to them about, oh, well, you know, imagine this, but, you know, in this kind of like orientation or whatever. Um, but on the flip side, I will say like 
a lot of people think that um, teams that do the field build get a massive advantage to the game, which as somebody who has seen it um, since rejoining 125 the last like four or five years of building the fields, you have no idea what is going on. Um, the, yeah. Like Tyler was saying, like the, the drawings that they gave you make no sense. You do not get the placement of them on the field. Um, you don't even know what they really look like. For example, like the boiler in 2017, it was like so inaccurate. We had to rip it apart and rebuild it. Um, it was not at all <laughs> useful for us building our, our fuel shooting robot or, you know, like the, all the elements that we made in 2016 all broke because, you know, you're testing your yeah. prototypes and stuff and they're just smashing through it. But at the same time, like a bulk of our mentors, that was what they had to be committed to right at the end of the year was building that and making sure that it was done correctly. And then our students at kickoff would have to haul that like all the way across Northeastern's campus and like the frigid cold to go set it up. So while it is an advantage for, you know, a community, I would say, I think it's a really good thing. Um, for the people that were getting it ahead of time, it definitely wasn't necessarily a strategic advantage. Um, and for those who leaked the game, you all suck. Um, I know that this is the <laughs> yeah. day and age of like group no chats shit, and right? like Snapchats and stuff, but like you signed an NDA, like at least respect that. For the people that did ruin it for pretty much the entire community, like you absolutely suck for doing that. Um, that's really unfortunate. And I can guarantee that a, a large reason why this was done was because of the massive leaks that were going on. And it was mm -hmm. done by a lot of the mentors that, you know, maybe, you know, way too excited and, you know, young and enthusiastic about things. But it's unfortunate because a lot of these rookie teams are, you know, just new people in general to the the experience will not get that. And I really hope that first has an idea of like, I don't know, maybe there's some app we all download and then it'll maybe like magically appear. There's some website that has things preloaded, but like Tyler was saying, I'm kind of worried that whatever we do have to go access is just going to kind of crash and burn. So hopefully it won't. That ends my rant. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want to piggyback on something that Christine said about midway through her rant and <laughs> where she, <laughs> she mentioned that there was the, uh, like going there and seeing and feeling it is different than seeing it. Like putting on my my psychologist hat for a second. There's different people learn different ways, right? People experience different ways. Mm -hmm. I don't. Ex I would not know what was going on in like a VR setting. Like I don't learn that way. I need to touch things. I need to feel things. I need to move things around. I need to do that. Like so. Like this VR thing is like for me. It's like I'm like this. This is this would be useless to me as just the, how I am as a person, how I learn, how yeah. I visualize things like I need, it, it wouldn't work. And like I said, this is so much different, you know, that's so, different for everybody, but. But now I wonder too, like I know up at Manchester, they have the real field. So are they still going to yeah. provide that? And is that still going to be available to pretty much anybody that can show up? Because I think that would be a massive advantage, obviously for teams that yeah. are up here in New England or in driving yeah. distance. Like my dad's gone up every year to Manchester for the last, I don't know, like, you know, 20 years that he's been involved with the team and he goes and picks up the kit of parts there, but he also goes on the field and takes measurements and plays around with stuff. I get the call every year. Like, do you want me to measure anything? Like, no dad, that's what the game manual is for, but thanks. Yeah. But like, <laughs> is that, is that going to be available to everybody still? Like, how are they going to kind of decide like who gets that? I think that's more of an advantage than anything, being able to yeah. go up to the real yeah. field in Manchester and interact with them in like, I don't know. So what you're saying, Christine, is I need to fly out to Manchester next year and do a live stream where we take live Q&A. Hell yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah. I, I, I think that's the plan right there. You that's, really should. Uh, we did have a, a couple of comments asked questions. Uh, Great Phantom Delta, do you think the virtual fields will be available to public download? I would assume so. Maybe not on kickoff day. Unless it's like, I mean, I don't know how else you would get them, right? Yeah, I, I think I think they will be public, but I agree it might not be on kickoff day. Yeah, kickoff yeah, but day. Maybe might... I'm wondering if like the lead, um, like the what is it, the lead contact or whatever sure. for each team will get some sort of special email, so it's not necessarily like everybody in the universe. Like a key for it. Yeah. Right okay. That that's what I mean. Sense. That's what I mean. On kickoff day, it might be something like that. I I just sort of assume it would be public maybe a week in. I don't. That's just what I. I mean, like, what's the point in not keeping it public after a point? Yeah, yeah I, could, I could see if you wanted to kind of uh, limit the bandwidth a little bit on it. So. Yeah. Uh, Shawik uh, asked, uh, and it was kind of answering chat, but uh, says, uh, my team was a rookie team last year, but I personally wasn't at kickoff, so I'm a little confused here. Uh, so chat's going too fast here. So kickoffs <laughs> had real fields at kickoffs before, and uh, now they are putting out virtual fields so no one can leak it early. So they weren't 
real fields. Christine, do you want to kind of describe what they were, like what you had to do? Yeah, the so there's probably photos out there, but basically we would get these like really insane, um, you know, emails and drawings of different field elements. And we had no idea how they kind of correlated with each other until pretty much on like kickoff. Um, you know, for example, in 2017, we didn't make the airship. We made um, kind of like the base of the airship, like this weird, um, it was like a frame that had the rope hanging down from it. Mm -hmm. uh, we made the peg with a spring on it. Um, and then the boiler was literally this massive box with like a hole cut out at the top. So, you know, you have something like that. But then in, let's say, 2016, we had to build all of the little um, defense, like really awkward like angles and then um each of the defenses kind of swapped out so it varied year to year of like what was useful and what wasn't and a lot of the times as builders like we had no idea what was going on um and a lot of the time you're you're buying the wood yourself i mean you get to keep it at the end of the day but at the same time it's like for a team like 125 we don't necessarily have the space to to keep all this stuff so for us it's like okay what what's the most useful and what can we kind of pawn off to other people but you're buying all the wood, you're hoping that you don't screw up. And after a while, like, I will say, like, to the credit of the people on 125, like Brando and a bunch of other mentors that aren't really with the team anymore, but come back every year for the the mess in circus of this, um, they kind of, they kind of got it down to a system where, you know, we looked through all of the drawings, there was some like master spreadsheet that Brandon has that he would like plug everything into, and it would spit out like how much of each type of wood we needed to get and what mm -hmm. we need to cut it to. So we would cut like X amount of two by fours and then, you know, X amount of uh, sheets of plywood. And we tried, we actually made that uh, public last year because as a, as a team that's done this a million times, like I can't imagine being like a rookie team or a younger team that wants to build different field elements because it is really important for prototyping and like practicing and all that stuff. But just like trying to figure out, okay, you know, how do I budget for this? What should I make? Like, how do I make it? Um, because a lot of us as field builders go through this process and figure out, okay, well, I could do it this way instead of that way. I can use this material instead of that. So, I'm, I mean, I'm really glad that it's kind of done away with at this point because it is a huge pain, um, probably more so than it is a benefit. But I'm really curious how this is going to impact new teams and if it's going to be a massive shock to the system for them when they go to their first event um, Hopefully this will kind of draw other more veteran teams to reach out to rookies and make sure that they have some sort of understanding after seeing this like, you know, virtual field that we're all going to experience at some point. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, I don't know, the, the whole field build thing, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, oh, yeah. There are teams that do build it out of actual material though. Like I know in Connecticut, um, maybe like, maybe it was 2016, they built a legitimate field. The amount of money that's put into that is absolutely insane, but they had like legitimate parts to the field. 